and it's going on YouTube right now. I think so. I started the broadcast. Can, can you hear us now? Can Hello. you hear Hello, can you hear me? Can you guys wave? Hello. <laughs> okay, why is my microphone not working? Can you can hear, you hear us? We can hear you. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Sorry for all the delays and the confusion. Um, it's been quite the morning. We're super excited to uh, have a lecture with you guys. If you can select which screen that you want to see, Mrs. Thomas, select the one that has me. Okay, you, you are showing right now. Okay, so you can all see me. You can see what's behind me then. Yes. Okay, excellent. I can see uh, several of the students, so that's great. Um, it will be a great conversation between the four of them and me. No, just kidding. <laughs> we can move some of them up no, closer. No, no. no, it's okay. That's perfect. As long as they're the ones that answer the questions when I ask them. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you're in the hot seat now. Uh oh, they're scared. <laughs> oh boy, no need, to, no need to be scared. Um, so, good morning, everyone. I understand it's pretty early in the morning there. Uh, it's around noon, eleven thirty, our time here in Boston. Um, and I wanted to thank you all for having me today. Thank Mrs. Thomas for uh, inviting me to be in your classroom. Um, I'm really excited. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So I'm. Super excited to be uh, giving back to Great Falls High and talking with some some fellow bison. Um, woo so as Mrs. Thomas may or may not have mentioned, this is going to be the first in a series of conversations that we're having uh, throughout the course of the year. So I hope that you're going to get to know me a lot better uh, and the work that we do at Great Falls High. Um, excuse me, the work that we do here at Boston University, and that I'm going to be learning more about you and the work that you're doing at Great Falls High. Um, and the goal of this whole collaboration is to really connect what you're doing in your labs with the work that we're doing here. Because believe it or not, the things that you're learning in your Earth and Space Science class have a lot of relevance to the things that I study here at Boston University uh, as a member of our Antarctic Research Group. So, um, I am a PhD student. How many of you know what a PhD student is? It's okay if you don't. How many of you know what a PhD student means? Oh, we got about a third of them, maybe a quarter. That's great. That's better than, uh, than what I thought. So a PhD student um, is a person who wants to be an expert in a particular field. So uh, as, as a PhD student, I've gone to high school. I graduated from high school, Great Falls High, class of 2012, go Bison. Um, I graduated from uh, a college called Occidental College in Los Angeles a couple years ago. And then after college, I go on to graduate school. And graduate school is simply um, like a specialized school that one goes to after college, like law school or medical school. And that's what I'm doing now is, is getting my, my uh, doctorate degree. So I'm joining you today from a room that we call the Digital Image Analysis Lab, which uh, it's a lot more high tech than it might look for you just seeing me on the screen. Uh, and I actually wanted to be able to show you uh, what, what the Digital Image Analysis Lab looks like. So I'm going to pick up one of our, or show you on one of our auxiliary cameras um, the setup that we have going today. So uh, you should be able to see, did it change your view? Mm. No? No, we still see the screen. Okay, down on, below, there's a, there should be another box to click on. Click on Keith. Okay. Okay. So this is the this is our this is what our lab looks like right now. So you can see we've got a light right there that's shining on me, a big screen that stands behind me, and all of these um, computer monitors. And uh, there's Keith. He's our tech. Um, we have a drone. He's holding up our drone. Uh, and these are actual tools that we use to do the science um, every day. So you can now click back to me, um, Donovan. Okay, okay, we're back. We're back. 
Great. Um, so this image, this room, the digital image analysis lab, is just one half of our lab. Uh, the second half is where we do the actual like hands-on science experiments, um, where we use samples, where we run experiments, um, look at microscopes. And those are the, we'll be talking a lot about that later on in the semester. But today I wanted to give you kind of a brief overview, um, very brief overview of who I am and just an introduction to what I do. So the goal of our talk today Discussion points. Who am I? What do I and other scientists do? And if you can see on the bottom here, what is science in the first place? Um, and then a brief introduction to how to save the world every day using science. Uh, so if you can see on the screen here, this is a much younger version of myself. Uh, I, if Mrs. Thomas may or may not have mentioned it, but I grew up uh, in Great Falls. Uh, how many of you have been to the public library before? Do you know where the public library is? Oh, wow, lots of you. Okay, great. And I see that the four people in my field of view said yes, so that's good. Um, I lived in the yellow house right next to the library. So there's a big jungle gym in the backyard. When you drive by it, you can probably see. That was my house. Um, lived there till I graduated and went to college. Uh, and while this picture might suggest that I was interested in science from a really young age, that was definitely not the case. While I was interested in snow and glaciers from a young age. And it actually took me a long time to figure out that science was something that I wanted to do. So I thought I might dig up some pictures from when I was a first or a first year or sophomore, freshman or sophomore at Great Falls High. I decided I would spare everyone the embarrassment and rather show you pictures uh, from my graduation. So believe it or not, this is sooner than you think. You will be wearing these Columbia blue robes, um, walking across the Fieldhouse stage a lot sooner than you might expect. It was definitely the case for me. Um, and you know, when you graduate high school, it's a really exciting time. There's a lot of opportunities available to you. And one of those opportunities is heading to college. So that's what I did. I went to Great Falls, or I mean, I went from Great Falls High to a college called Occidental College, which is a small college, kind of like Carroll College in Helena. Um, and it's a, it's a small liberal arts college in Los Angeles, California. So this is a picture of the main entrance of Occidental. It's a very beautiful school. Uh, I, I enjoyed my time there. Um, and at Occidental, like Great Falls High, we had a lot of different classes that we had to take. So we had to take um, English classes, and we had to take science classes. And my sophomore year, I decided, oh, OK, it's time that I'm going to take my lab science class. And I was dead set on taking marine biology. It was, uh, I'd heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, we get to go to the ocean for field trips. We look at different organisms. I was super excited. Um, but the rumor got out, and it turns out everyone at Occidental wanted to take marine science. And so I ended up in an introductory geology class instead. And I was a little bit skeptical of geology, you could say, uh, when I started out. I'd heard you know, rocks for jocks, which is definitely a phrase that gets thrown around. Um, and so I started out this class and was really kind of uh, hesitant to really get involved. But as we kept going, I learned that geology was more than just about rocks and minerals. And instead, it was a lot about how landscapes are formed. And it, so we learned how the Rocky Mountains form, how rivers get their shape, um, how glaciers move and shape the landscape. We learned about why volcanoes explode and why other, some volcanoes don't explode and just kind of burp out lava. And it was a really amazing opportunity to get to learn about the landscapes that we have in Montana. So even though I was in California, I was learning all about the different kinds of landscapes that we see in Montana. And I think that that's why I started to really appreciate geology as a discipline, um, was that it offered this nice explanation for the different kinds of things that we see every day and that we take for granted. So for example, you probably, maybe or maybe not, you have asked the question, why is the Rocky Mountain front flat? Why are, as you're driving up to Shoto or uh, Augusto, when you look out at the Rocky Mountains, why do you see really flat rocks uh, in, in, kind of facing at you? 
or if you're out maybe in Highwood, there's a big sag in the middle of the prairie. Why is there a big sag there? These are all questions that geology and the study of Earth's surface allow us to answer. And I was pretty intrigued by that. So I started out at Occidental as a history major, was taking all these other classes that I had to do to, in order to get my degree. And along the way, I discovered I actually really want to do geology. I want to take this uh, to the next level and, and become a little bit more familiar with it, um, which is what I did. And I, this is why I'm really excited for you all to be able to take this class in high school. I never took an earth science class in high school. And you guys have a six year head start on me in discovering why the earth is such an incredible system and an incredible um, complex interplay of different things going on. Um, so as I understand it right now, before you all dive into the depths of earth science and space science, you're focusing on the question of what is science at all? What is the nature of science? Um, what does a scientist do every day? And so I wanted to ask you all, based on what we've learned so far, what is science? And I'm going to offer one rule in your explanation. You cannot use the word fact. So I'm asking for one member of the class to tell me what they think science is. I see some ducking heads. People ah. don't, don't want to answer. You want to tell your name. Hi, my name is Belle. Okay, hello. Get down a little, maybe get down. There you go. Perfect. There you go. Okay, tell me what you think science is. I think science is not just about facts, but also like discovering things. Great. Uh, like, say you want to know how, the earth, how, like you said, land forms were made. You can just do like investigations or um, read from a textbook and find out. That's exactly it. That's exactly what I was going to say. So I'm going to give you a very brief definition of what I think science is. Can you repeat your name for me? Did you say Bell? Yes, Bell. Bell, okay. And I want the class to think about how Bell's definition is similar to my definition. So my definition of science is using observation, experimentation, and analysis to study and identify natural processes. So if you think about it, we had similar answers, right? She was saying, oh, you can test things out. You can look at how, how mountains are made. That's exactly what experimentation and observation are. So as a scientist, I go out into the field and I look at, um, I look at different rocks and I look at the, the shape of the earth and it tells me uh, how the landscape was formed. That's experimentation and observation. And then as you go on in your career, you're going to take it one step further, which is analysis. And allow, analysis can mean quantitative analysis using math, um, but it can also mean qualitative analysis. So looking at the shape the valley, for example, can tell us a lot about how the valley formed. So you'll get deep into the depths of earth science, and we'll, we'll go on the journey together, and Mrs. Thomas is going to be our fearless leader in this um, throughout the year as you, as you really start to dive into earth science. Um, but I think it's important to, uh, to emphasize that science is different to everyone who practices science. So science might be different for a biologist, or it might be different from a chemist. And we can all have different definitions. Um, and that gets to the point of what I think science is as a whole, is science as a process. When we think of science, I don't want you to think of science as a discipline or a strict set of rules that you have to follow. Science is a way of thinking. It's a way of thinking critically about um, those things that we perceive to be as facts. Uh, so that's why I didn't want you to be able to use the word fact in your definition, because as a scientist, we're constantly questioning what facts are and, and and pushing back on them. Um, today, I think what I'm going to do is, and I have kind of an abbreviated session because we had a little bit of technical difficulty, but I'm going to explain to you what I think the nature of science is in the context of my own research. So very brief introduction to the kinds of things I like to ask questions about. So when I was at Occidental, I don't know if you can see this map very well, um, but when I was at Occidental, I got very interested in glaciers, and I decided I wanted to continue on a path of studying glaciology, which is the study of, of glaciers. 
So I signed up for a summer program that was on the Juneau ice field in southeast Alaska. So if you can see this map here, I have Great Falls, with this blue star, this is Great Falls, and way up in the corner, the red box, that's the Juneau ice field in southeast Alaska. But the first important question about doing research in southeast Alaska, how does one get there? How does one get to the Juneau ice field? We hike up to the Juneau ice field. So this was me about three years ago, um, several of the other students on the trip, and this was the first hike in what became a two month long expedition on the ice field. So everything that I had for two months was in this backpack here, uh, which meant it was very heavy and it was a very kind of long and arduous struggle the day that we had to get up to the ice field. It was raining and pouring and um, it was really cold and windy and we were slipping through the mud, uh, all of this with 50 pound packs on. But when we got there, it was pretty worth it because these are the kind of views that you get to see on the ice field. So this is, um, the ice field is, uh, is massive. Our journey was 90 miles across it by, by ski. So this is one of the kind of particular views that we got to see um, while we were up there. And you can see I'm kind of blinded by the sun over here in the corner. Um, many days, however, the ice field was less impressive and it looked a lot like this. So this is, I don't know how well it's showing up, but this is a white, it's all white, we call this life inside the ping pong ball. So this is what most days doing science on the Juno ice field was like. You couldn't see anything, you're stuck in the snow and, uh, and the clouds. If you're familiar with glaciers at all, if you've heard about some of the kind of extraordinary expeditions that some of these people go on, you might be familiar with crevasses. So that's what these are here. Crevasses are big cracks in the ice that form as the ice moves and flows down the downhill. So because ice is pretty solid, it cracks when it moves. So these huge holes here are crevasses. And while they might not look very big in this picture, they are. So this is me, I tethered up to a rope and we, we would call repel or just uh, fall with style into this giant, giant hole. Um, and this is what it looks like when you get down there. So, Pretty dangerous, but we make it as safe as possible with the ropes. Um, and we do this all in the name of science. So we're interested in asking questions about why we see these lines here, for example. You can see there's lines in this glacier. There's a line here, there's a line here, there's a line here. Why do we see those lines? That's an important question that we wanted to ask. What, what forms that ice uh, in the middle of the snow? And the last picture of, of just general views before I dive into what we actually did in terms of the science. Um, this, you can see there's people here, maybe if you can see it well enough, these are people. But the ice field is so big that these tiny little blips over here are also people. Um, for those of you who are interested, they do take high school students on this expedition. So um, like ex very talented senior students uh, do get invited. This is what science looks like every day on the Juno Ice Field. Um, digging a giant pit that's about 15 feet deep and rappelling into it so that I could sample the snow. And um, I was interested in the snow because the snow's chemistry tells a lot about the temperature at which the snow formed. So if we dig a pit and we go way back into the snowfall, and the snowfall here stays through the winter, so we can actually see many different years of snowfall as we dig down into this pit. And the snow tells us about the temperature. The chemistry of the snow tells us about the temperature. So the deeper we get, the farther back before humans were on this glacier taking the temperature, the more we can learn about what the temperature was in say the early 1900s or perhaps even beyond. But these are the kind of questions that we're interested in because as we all have heard, uh, the earth is warming and we want to know how that warming is impacting the glaciers in Alaska. This is our field site. So this is kind of right behind me is the big pit. And this is a less exciting pit, but um, more exciting story. So on this day, um, it was about 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it was pouring rain and snow. Uh, it was a miserable day, 40 mile an hour winds and we're out in the middle of nowhere just kind of trying to get through our science. And I was 
absolutely just so upset, so angry, so mad. My gloves were frozen, my hands were freezing, and I was dealing with snow, which as you know, melts when it gets in contact with a 98.6 degree human. So it's warming and it's freezing onto my hands. And that's pretty, pretty problematic when you're trying to deal with very small snow samples. So these orange vials here are what we actually put the snow in. Um, and I was uncapping and recapping and writing, and this was one of the lowest days I had. And why am I out here asking all these questions? And I think that the reason I was out and persevered through this situation um, is the reason that a lot of scientists persevere through the difficulties in their fieldwork, and that's because they really care about the things that they study. So you're going to learn a lot this year, and we're all going to learn a lot um, as we go through the the year learning about earth science and learning about all these different topics. Um, and I encourage you to become passionate about one thing because when you become passionate about it, it makes the struggle or however difficult it might be a little bit easier. And, and I think that that, if we're talking about the nature of science, that, that really gets at the nature of science and what scientists do. Realizing. You all are already actually scientists. You've had you know, two semesters of, of science in, in middle school or because you've already had you know, three weeks of classes. You're scientists in your everyday life, which is um, something you might not have thought about. But how many of you have ever thought about the miles per gallon in a car? I see lots of hands. I bet your parents are very concerned about this or your family members as gas prices go up and down. Well, I, I'm not sure if you know this, but uh, at very fast speeds, your miles per gallon goes down, and at, at low speeds, your miles per gallon uh, is better. So people who are thinking about that, like my mom, who's always worried about how much gas she's using in her car, even if she doesn't realize that she's actually engaging in science, and you do this in a similar way. For example, what are the consequences if you don't turning your homework. Well, you can do an experiment, right? Oh, I don't turn in my homework. Well, I find out what the consequences are. Um, those kind of, that process of critically thinking, that's science in action. Um, so the nature of science isn't necessarily a strict set of rules. We have the scientific method for a reason, but the nature of science is simply asking questions and seeking answers to those, those questions. Um, and I, I really want to emphasize one kind of final point because I know that we're getting close on time. Um, there's no such thing as a science person. This is a number one pet peeve of mine when I hear someone say to me, I'm not a, I'm not a science person. And I bet that some of you have probably said this in the past, maybe in a math class or science class. Um, with hard work, anyone can be a good scientist. Anyone can be a, a critical science thinker. And so I don't want to hear, and I hope that Mrs. Thomas uh, doesn't let you say things like, I'm not a science person, because whether or not you realize it, you already are a science person. And with hard work, um, you can definitely kind of move to the next level, which is actually being excited by science and, and learning things in the process. Um, so I know, again, abbreviated session today. Hopefully the next time will be a little longer now that we've worked out some of the technical kinks. Um, but the, uh, the general premise of the day, everything is science, and to save the world with science, because we're at a juncture right now where I think a lot of people are thinking about the end of the world and, you know, how do I, how do I impact the world around me with science? It's simply to ask questions and to think critically about the information that you're provided. So uh, think about that as we move forward throughout the year, as Mrs. Thomas um, gives you lectures and, and, and information and as you do your labs and as I kind of pop in here and there to talk about how what you're doing is related to what I like to study here in Boston. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Donovan. Yeah, I hope I didn't bore you all. I know I can, scientists are generally boring people, but. Ah, not, <laughs> no, not at all. What do you guys say to Donovan? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And uh, like I said, we'll be well, I'll be in touch. So this is the first of many, hopefully. Thank you so much, Donovan. We'll be in touch too, okay? Okay, sounds good. Right, I'll pop in here and say hi to you. I don't know where. There I am.
<laughs> All right, great to meet you in person. Okay. All right. All right, good luck with your week. Okay. Talk to you soon.